everybody, Tiffany for Tiffany's Epiphanies. Um, thank you so much for watching my video in advance. I appreciate you bunches. So um, I am a Christian in recovery and at my church we have started doing a discipleship again. And I've done one before and we talked through a lot of the Old Testament, but now we're gonna focus more on the New Testament, which is really great because that's, you know, that's the story before Jesus came and he died for our sins. So, you know, that's that was amazing, and I'm not getting into that part, but um, we're going to be doing different readings, and I kind of want to bring it in to some things that I've noticed in recovery. And so, um, today we kind of talked about Psalms 42, and it's titled kind of um, Longing for God, and it's the story of David, and most people know about David. He fought Goliath. He fought Goliath because for 40 days he was talking smack. To the Israelites and David's like why are y'all all just sitting here you know like, he's a giant and he's like well forget that I'm gonna fight for God and that's what David did and he was just like a little shepherd boy then playing the harp for Saul when he was stressed out who's king of the Jews um I don't want to get too much into that I can you know if you need to know where comment down below ask me questions I can give you answers if you want to know where to find the story of David but um he wrote the book of Psalms, and he said in this part, um, it says, I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must, my, why must I go around in sorrow because of enemies' oppression? My adversaries taunt me as if crushing my bones, while all day long they say to me, where is your God? Why am I so depressed? Why this turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, and I will still praise him, my Savior and my God. And David knew God favored him because, I mean, Samuel you know told David that and and it's like you know even a person at that time people that's been in contact with like those miracles and and all those things even they had times like the Jews in the beginning when they came from Egypt you know they saw manna come from the sky they saw the Red Sea part and and they see all these like smoke coming down from a mountain there's a story about where a fa whole family got swallowed into the ground and people saw this but then, like, later, they don't believe in God anymore, and they want to worship a golden cow. So, anyways, um, that's what happens. And it's just like in the program, because we've been so long without something bigger than us guiding us, without us putting our will into it, is that we just kind of get mad at God. And, I mean, it's just the stories I hear. There's no God. God wouldn't let this stuff happen. And and you, you just can't talk to people sometimes. All you can do is be an example of what you feel like. I try to be an example of God's love and I'm not perfect and I try to tell people that I'm not but um, I'm naturally a happy person I'm also naturally a hyper person so I guess that's why I kind of try to channel into here but anyways talking about even the people with the biggest faith can feel abandoned by God at times but they know that's not true um, we'll feel those I usually just feel them for a second I have my pity party but you know what? All you get when you sit on a pity pot is a ring around your butt. So, you know, feel your feelings for a second, but then let it go. And um, get back up and do what you're supposed to do. Um, I'm starting to pray more. Like, I get down on my knees. I forget to do that. Sometimes I just roll over in bed and put my forehead down and I just pray and pray like that. That's something that's really weird for me to do in public. I never wanted to, but I've started doing that more. So, I'm really excited. But, um, you know, I've never felt abandoned by God. I always knew he was around. I just always felt ashamed. And that might be another thing people go through. So, um, that's kind of the topic today. And he's, and he's not, you know, in our, in AA, we're always evolving. Okay. And sometimes we have to do different things to get that connection that we're looking for. For me, I could not keep my mind still. So I started a, a person that did yoga showed up one day at my CrossFit studio and we all started doing yoga. I never thought I would. I thought it was just a bunch of stretching. But she taught me how to sit in the fire, which means like if I might be in an uncomfortable position that's not hurting me, but I learned how to quiet my mind. And, um, and then it just taught me how to react like that in the world to calm down when I react to things. Just sit in that fire. Be uncomfortable, but not in pain. And, um, you know, and then I started going to church. So there's just different things that I've done. This program evolves, our recovery evolves, and we do different things. So um, if you have any questions about that kind of stuff, just comment below. If you're subscribed to my channel, I would really love some feedback. 
um, because that's what the fellowship of AA is all about. You know, we could all just take a magic pill to have those cravings go away, but you know what we wouldn't have? We wouldn't have contact with other people because we all help each other because AA has just been passed down by word of mouth for years. I mean, we have the big book, you know, that has like the template of what we need to be doing in here, but it's also the people and it's full of experiences of what to do, but then there's also life of what not to do. And that's what's really great about this program. So I hope this helps somebody today. It might be totally random, but um, thank you so much for your time. If it's not what you need, stick it in your spiritual toolkit for later. I appreciate you and love you and God bless.